Hey, hey, what's up gardening friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I am great doing some things out here. I don't know when this video is going to come out, but right now I'm trying to get my plants ready to be picked up and go off to a greenhouse for winter storage. So I'm scrambling to get videos filmed on the plants that won't be here this winter to talk about. The Alexander Palm. This is one I've wanted to talk about for a long time. Just kept putting it off. So I thought I'd just pick up the camera. We could do a little plant chat. Talk about the care, but still gonna keep it kind of casual. All right, so the Alexander Palm. This is a Dicosperma elegans. Goes by the name King Alexander Palm, Alexander Palm, and and the solitaire palm because it typically is grown with one trunk. Just a straight up narrow pole. They have very slender trunks. Naming wise, because of that Alexander name and then King Alexander, oftentimes they, <laughs> the name gets used interchangeably with the Archantrophoenix Alexandrae, which is a very different palm. It has different growing requirements. That's not what we're talking about here. That's why I made sure to put the Latin name up there. These will reach anywhere from 20 to 25 feet tall. They are tolerant of fairly low light conditions, but I would still say they do best with moderate or medium light. Full sun, when they get larger, when they're smaller, the, they'll scorch a little bit more easily with too much direct light on them. They're like an organically rich, well-drained potting media that'll hold on to some moisture for a while, but not stay soggy because that'll cause the plant to rot. Don't want that to happen. For best growth and best appearance in the plant, don't let the soil dry out. At least nothing more than the top probably inch or two of soil. That would be kind of the max on that one. Of course, during the winter months, you want to reduce the watering. I'm talking about indoor care here. I personally consider them to be a moderate to a fast growing palm tree. They appreciate regular water, regular fertilizing with an all-purpose palm fertilizer, something like that. Keep it consistent every couple weeks to once a month during the growing season. And then that's something to go ahead and pull back on during the winter months when the day lengths are a lot shorter. I do like some humidity, so there may be some brown tips, some discoloration, on the foliage if there's not enough humidity in the home. Being said, just like any other plant, keep it away from drafts, hot or cold, or just direct air blowing on the fronds. That'll increase how much brown you have on those tips. The reason I wanted to talk about the Alexander palm is because I get asked fairly frequently what some of my favorite palm trees are to grow indoors that have that fun trunked appearance on them. This is, this is it. This is my favorite. Now, most commonly the Adenidia palms, the Christmas palms, those are what we see sold, I think, more frequently in the nursery trade as far as houseplant palms go that have a fun trunk on them. Like the two, you see I have the two down here. I have several of them. They're fun palm trees, but I think that they are much more of a pain to grow indoors than the Alexander palms. For one, the Adenidia palms, they grow a little bit more slowly. They prefer a lot more heat. Adenidias are less forgiving of cooler temperatures. They need a lot of light. They prefer a good amount of humidity if you want to have nice robust trunks on the plants. Like, realistically, an Adenidia palm is only going to look good indoors for a few years unless you have a, like humongous windows or an atrium, something like that. A spot where you can provide a really good amount of light and warmth. The solitaire palms, though they do prefer a warmer climate, they are more suitable for being kept in the home. They're not going to be as fussy when they don't have the high humidity and the high heat. And they don't need full sun. The bigger they get, the more light they're going to want. And of course, watering needs to be adjusted based on how much light the plant gets. When these are smaller, they can take, I would say, low to medium light, but you're still going to get the best growth out of them with medium to bright light. I still would avoid direct sun with them until they've reached a considerable size, probably over six to eight feet tall. This one used to scorch almost every time it got brought outside during the spring, but once it reached about, I'd say eight feet tall, somewhere in there, it stopped doing that. It didn't need anywhere near as much of an adjustment period. It was much more adaptable to just taking the sun. I know you might be looking at this and thinking, Jeff, what the hell are you talking about? Who can fit this in their house? Well, here's the thing. Okay, I've had this one for a really, really long time. They, they don't get this big overnight. You get one in a three gallon container, you have easily a decade probably until it's pushing out from an eight foot to 10 foot ceiling. Okay, maybe like seven years. It just depends on how fast the plant's growing because that's going to vary depending on the amount of light and heat and water and those things. On that note of watering these plants, I water this plant a 
lot. Of course, more in the summer than in the winter time. I mean, during the winter time, I don't water it at all because I no longer have it in the winter because it doesn't fit in my house anymore. The years when I did have this in the house, I made sure the soil stayed consistently moist even during the winter time. I would never let the soil dry out more than maybe the top two inches. That's about it. They're not exactly drought tolerant. So that's something that they do have in common with the Edenidia palms, but the difference here is that with an Edenidia palm, if you keep that consistently moist in your home and it's not like 80 degrees with tons of sunlight, they'll just rot and die. Okay, that's not fully true. I'm being a little bit hard on the Edenidia palms. Try and get that out of the way. There we go. He's still, I can't get the full thing into frame. Like I said, I've had it a long time. It's done a lot of growing over the years. I've had this one for maybe, I want to say like eight to 10 years, somewhere in there. It was probably, I don't know, five and a half to six feet tall when I got this plant. And I know it looks like it's, I mean, it is, it's a gigantic plant. I've only had to repot the plant once and it can stay in the pot that's in for a very long time. Palm trees are notorious for enjoying being somewhat pot bound. The solitaire palms can go a very long time without needing a new pot. However, I do still make sure to pull some of that surface soil every spring and amend it very heavily with a nice nutrient rich potting mix that's been mixed with some organic material like compost, hummus, something like that. That just, that helps buy some time in between repotting the plant. Right now that's in a 36 inch pot and the pot is roughly 32, 36 inches tall. So that adds three feet to it. So while the plant looks absolutely massive, because it is, and you gotta subtract three feet from that. So I'd say in the time I've had this palm, it's roughly doubled in size. And just like any, you can't see that. The bananas are in the way. Indoors, they're gonna be prone to spider mites, potentially mealy bugs. My pool just turned off. So that's probably gonna be kind of weird in the audio. Don't know what happened there. There's a ghost in my filter. Provided they get the right humidity and airflow, spider mites aren't as likely to be a problem, but that's something you can handle fairly easily by spraying them off, using horticultural oils and things like that to treat them. I've never had any pest problems with these, but again, they haven't been in my house in like four years, I would say. It's been about four years since I was able to fit this in the house. Whenever I repotted it, because that's when it stopped fitting through the door. I mean, now that wouldn't fit, that definitely wouldn't fit my ceiling either. In summary, this is probably my favorite of the trunk palms. Yes, mine is very big, so it probably doesn't seem like the best thing to recommend as a houseplant. There aren't a lot of palms that have that smooth trunk to them with the rings that stay smaller and do well indoors. There's always bamboo palms. The uh, Mayan palm may be an option, but still they just, they don't have the same appearance. And there are a fair amount of palms that will stay smaller and have a neat looking trunk on them. Those palms are typically ones that like a lot of heat and humidity and moisture and just don't make the best house plants. I wouldn't necessarily say that this one makes the best house plant in comparison to something like an Edenidia palm, which are the ones that are sold most commonly, at least here in the US as house plants. These are definitely a better option. And don't get me wrong. I think Edenidia palms are adorable. Like they're probably one of my favorite palms just as far as cuteness goes. But as far as growing them indoors, they just, they're not the best. Like I said, unless you have have lots of light and warmth and can give them plenty of water, they tend to fizzle out after a few years. Whereas the Alexander palm, these much more tolerant of indoor conditions. What are some of your favorite palm trees to grow in the house? Just in general, just palm trees or just house plants, say whatever you want. Comment down below. I love talking to everybody. The lighting is horrible today, so I apologize for video quality, but I just found out that the people who take the palm trees away are coming tomorrow. Like they just told me, so I just, I had to get this done. I might get a ladder out and see how high I can hold my tripod up to get some better shots. Yeah, I can figure that out. The magic of editing. Oh, and the, mine has some, burnt fronds on it. That's just last year's growth. It hasn't fallen off the plant yet. That's basically what happened the place that I store the plants. That's, 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 they did that. That just happens. The Alexander palms and the Adenidias, they both do this. They're old foliage. It tends to just kind of fizzle out and brown off. And over time, it'll collapse down and fall down on its own. All while flushing out with nice, lush, new green growth. Anyways, hope y'all are doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.